Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe, people of Earth. Welcome to part two of Build the 172 Scale uh, Space Shuttle from Ravel. This is their 40th anniversary kit, skill level five, which, uh, you know, is, is, a little, uh, is a little bit of a warning to people such as me, the mediocre modelers club. But anyway, here we are, we're, we're on the bench. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen part one, please go back and check it out because it's sort of the preamble for all of this. Um, but what I, uh, the, the purpose of me wanting to tackle this now is because um, my dear friend Wayne Green and I uh, just recently visited the Hayes Complex in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, which is out by the airport. It's not the museum that's in town. Uh, where the 11-foot uh, enterprise is. Uh, sadly, that, that's still closed for renovation. So, um, but the complex out by the airport is absolutely extraordinary. It's extraordinary. And we had a great time there. And uh, to, be, to be perfectly uh, honest with you, the impetus for this was this. <laughs> Isn't that great? There he is, the great Wayne Green of World of Wayne, and uh, he is presenting to you the Discovery Shuttle, which, um, Wayne, I really appreciate you doing that because that's exactly what we're trying to build here. Um, I took a lot of reference photos of the Discovery as it lives now at the Smithsonian, and that's what I'm trying to capture here. Wheels down, uh, bay doors closed, uh, but uh, really wanting to show you its, it, you know, the the incredible nature of of this, and and it also really it looks in its sort of final weathering, right? Uh, so STS-133, which was the final flight of Discovery, and uh, in 2011, and uh, then obviously uh, it it made its way to the Smithsonian, and uh, it it sits there and you can actually not only get up close, you can literally walk under it. Um, and, and it's extraordinary to see if you ever get a chance to do it, please do because, um, it's humbling. And the fact of the matter is, is it really gives you a, a, a tremendous sort of appreciation for the fact that still in the eighties, uh, and early nineties, when these shuttles, uh, were, were, were flying, um, the fact of the matter is, is it was still not only incredibly dangerous, uh, as you know, obviously we lost two shuttles, um, one on takeoff and one on land, uh, coming into land. Um, and it, it just really makes you realize uh, just, just how difficult it is. But it's also interesting to see what's going on now with, now with private space travel and you know the, the competition that's, that's happening there. But clearly, Elon Musk and SpaceX have, have, have really led the way in terms of private space travel, and their partnership with NASA is really uh, the saving grace of, of why the space station continues to fly um, and, and be serviced. But I suspect that the next thing we're going to try and do is go back to the moon, put a base on the moon, and use that to refuel ships to get to Mars. A lot easier to do it from there um, than, than it is to 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 do it from planet Earth. But anyway, um, I'm here and um, I thought this was a good place to jump in because uh, I'm not detailing the inside of the cargo bay. It's going to be closed uh, because it is closed, as I mentioned in part one, um, at uh, Smithsonian. It is not open. It, Houston's Atlantis is open. The doors are open and it's on an angle so you can look inside. Very cool. But that's not what we're doing here. I showed you my after park it, uh, after park it. <laughs> I showed you my aftermarket parts, uh, three parts, right? Uh, engine bells, uh, and the, uh, thruster, uh, rotate, uh, sort of, um, uh, management system, um, for, for the, 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 the nose of this, which I'll show you. I've just, I've sort of just installed it, uh, but, but just installed it. And of course, our decal sets. Um, and uh, but our thermal blankets, we're going to use medical tape to do it. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. But I thought this was a great place to start. So uh, first of all, let me show you uh, what I've done here. 
Uh, this is uh, an after, uh, aftermarket part, uh, which I, I talked to you about in, in, um, in part one. Uh, this, uh, this comes from Updraft Model Works, and uh, you can find them online. And uh, they, um, they've, they've done this in PLA, highest quality I've ever seen. It's absolutely extraordinary. They give you a template to cut out and put it in. Um, I struggled with it just a little bit, but um, what I've done here is I've, uh, I've just put epoxy putty on this and it is wet. Nothing has been sanded. Um, I just wanted to show you it in situ uh, so that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Lots of sanding to do there. Um, I have installed the cockpit, um, basic gray, and I put a little bit of the blue on the seats. Uh, what you'll see through the windows, negligible. But uh, we, did, we did do that just so that there would be something in the windows. The one thing that I do think is curious about that, and unfortunately I've masked off the windows now, but the cool thing is, is when you look at um, extreme close-up shots of uh, the, the shuttle, you see the sort of the dashboard in the windows. And that's the coolest part about this. You, you do get that dashboard effect. You can see the gray dashboard through it. Um, but I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do a little bit of, a uh, little more work on these windows. Um, they're not bad. Uh, they're not perfect, but they're not bad. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hit them with some matte black um, to help me with uh, sort of the framing of these windows a little more. Um, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to do a little more sanding here. This this here is not super accurate, but it's darn close. It's darn close. Th there is a ledge here, and it's a little more defined, uh, but it's not, not terrible. And my decal set uh, should really make this pop, so I'm pretty excited about that. I've got a wacky seam here that I'm going to have to take care of, but that's okay, because all of this is going to be blankets, and uh, tiles and so um, we're gonna have a lot of fun with that I did add if it, it, you can see how this side is is completely uh, clear right it was the exact same on the opposite side exact same so what I've done is I have drilled into the side here this vent um, now, near as I can tell, that's what it is. It, 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 it's a port vent, um, but it, it doesn't appear to open because when you look inside, when you look at the photos of Discovery, it's tile. It's all tiled. So um, I'm going to do a little more research on just exactly what that is. But we're cleaning that up, sanding that up, and 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 that is that is sort of accurate and where it should be. Um, on some of the other shuttles, there's a second one. Uh, closer up on the uh, the top here, closer to this window right here, but it doesn't appear to exist on Discovery. It only appears, uh, this one's the only one that seems to appear. Um, so, um, I have uh, glued the wings in, and um, I have not worked on any seams yet. Let me get you wider, sorry about that. Uh, no seams have been worked on, uh, but, uh, but I put the basic kit together, um, I've got all of this seamage here, um, so I'm going to do a little cleanup, but this whole thing is going to be a decal. It's going to be a tile decal. So um, lots, of, lots of work to do there. Um, and some umbilicals here. Now these are open uh, in, the, um, in the Smithsonian, so what I, do, I, may, I may scratch build some doors so these appear to be open because they are open on the display model. So I, I, I probably will be doing that. Um, but um, other than that, uh, she's, looking, she's looking really, you know, sort of good in terms of starting to put the basic, uh, the basic model together. Now, um, in the back here, I deliberately not glued the tail section because I have to, uh, what I have to do is, is this is going to be black, these are going to be tiled. Um, now, Interestingly enough, these actually act as an air brake. They, they can split open, they can splay open. 
um, but they don't give you the ability to do that with this model. You, you can only glue two halves together. I could have scratch built something maybe, but no, nah, it's not displayed like that. So that's okay. That's going to sit up in here. Um, and then, uh, you can, you can glue that, but, um, pretty darn hard for me to get that all detailed out correctly. Um, so I'm going to be stuck in this position for, for, for a little bit. Um, not really feeling the need to reinforce the inside of this. Um, I know some guys did it on the monogram version because um, I guess they felt that this was going to collapse. But I have to tell you, I don't get the impression this is going to collapse at all anytime soon. Um, so, and now I have uh, the the doors back, the, the, the bay doors back on. Um, and they'll just go on like this. Um, they're going to go on like this. Uh, da, 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 da. What is going on? Yeah, it's a little out of skew, but that's okay. Uh, they'll go on like that. Um, and any seamage I have here is going to be hidden by blankets. But I'll obviously clean it up. And once it's all painted and blended in, this is going to look pretty good. Uh, but, um, that is, that is sort of what's going on there. So I've, I've got to put these in, um, and then I'm, I, I'm sort of ready to go off to the races. Um, and then it's just about a whole bunch of, uh, detailing and painting and scuffing and staining and doing all kinds of fun things because, um, the, 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 the tiles got a tremendous amount of, uh, heat scorch from them the uh, black tiles on the belly of this uh, have all kinds of scorch marks which we're probably going to recreate with oils easiest way for me to do it especially on top of the sealed decals so we'll seal those give let them dry and then we'll do our um, oil staining on top of that just to get all that streaking but it will be sort of parked like this so uh, unless I stick it on a mirror, which I, I could do, um, you're not going to see an awful lot of it, but we'll know it's there. <laughs> oh, I always love saying that. All right. Um, so let me put that to a side for a second um, and talk about some other things. Um, I have been working on my, um, my rear wheels. Here they are. Um, uh, so I've been, uh, what I've been doing is, is I've been, uh, detailing them out, picking out some, some reds and some coppers and running these, uh, brake cables, uh, down here. This is just simply a very thin wire that I have that I love to use for pipage. And then I also use, um, my lead, uh, lead wire, which in this case is just, it's sol solder wire really. But it's absolutely fantastic for pipes, uh, especially if you're building model planes. But anyway, um, so I've been I, I've been decking those out. They have not been detail, finished detailed yet. There's no washes on them. But I just wanted to show you the progress I've made uh, on on getting these detailed out. So pretty happy with those, um, and that's good. So um, the uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was. The actual landing gear doors, um, here they are. And, um, the idea is, is that they're gonna, they're gonna hang down, uh, like this. Uh, they're, they're tiled on the outside and on the inside, uh, they're supposed to be, um, uh, I believe it is aircraft grade aluminum. Um, and then they've got some, some framage on it. So, um, but I didn't like how thin they were. So what I've done is, um, I've gone ahead and taken some, um, one millimeter, uh, excuse me, uh, two mil, uh, card, plastic card. And I have glued that, uh, to the actual, um, to the actual kit part. And that has, uh, this has just been, um, uh, primed with some, some matte black, but what that's allowed me to do is just get that thickness in there that you see on the actual plane. And then, uh, excuse me, spaceship. 
And then what I'm going to do is use my metal uh, foil for aluminum, and that'll go there, and that that will sit on either side of the um, the landing gear bay doors. And that should look pretty good. And then on top of that, there is, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, some frameage. So I've got a little bit of this uh, plastic uh, pipage, um, and I'm going to uh, just glue these on in, in panel squares as they are on the actual part, uh, uh, the actual um, uh, shuttle itself has these. And then um, what I will do is um, I will kill that shine with some, um, some matte, um, possibly some semi-gloss because it is aircraft grade aluminum. And when you look at the space shuttle, it's pristine. I mean, everything is pristine on it. It's, it's beautiful. All of the, the, the surfaces were kept immaculately clean, immaculately clean. So I, I, I do want to sort of demonstrate a little a bit of that. Although once in a while you see interesting things like you'll see a little bit of grease dripping down or, or something like that. That could be because it's just sitting still and has been for so long. I, I, don't, I don't really know. But anyway, uh, we're going to be working on that. And as I finish these detailed parts, um, I will post uh, in the weeds photos of the build uh, on my Instagram account, as I always do. Uh, so if you guys can see those details, but I just wanted to show you what I what I what I'm working on there. Uh, the engine bells um, are really nifty. Uh, these are the aftermarket engine bells, as I said, from uh, Updraft, and um, I've given them a coat of matte black um, and um, there uh, I've drilled a hole ready to receive this in the back uh, but these are gonna have to be obviously they're gonna be dry brushed and washed because uh, we've got all kinds of um, uh, protective cover over these uh, cooling lines uh, that cool the cool the bell um, as fuel is 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 shot into it um, it, it's quite it's quite an elaborate thing, but uh, I just really happy with uh, the the detail of this. I mean, it's uh, it, it's really far superior to the part that comes with the kit. Um, just just a lot more detailed, um, and even the actual shape of it uh, is more I would say correct. Do you see this bell is fatter? This one is much much more um, correct in terms of how it, it, it's been it's been engineered. So I'm really, really happy I went for these um, aftermarket parts. They're going to make a difference. Um, so I've been working on that. And what I'm going to do now is um, I'm actually going to be uh, working on this. This is the rear uh, part of the uh, of the engine uh, where the engine bells are. And what I've, what I've done is, is I've painted it black and hit it with a gloss ready to receive its decals because I have to get the decals on here uh, be before I can actually go ahead and uh, put the, the engine bells uh, back on here like this. Um, so all of this will have to be painted and detailed out and this will have to be finished before I can install it. Otherwise, um, I'm just not going to be able to uh, install it correctly on the shuttle. Uh, so that's what we'll do now. Um, let me get the decals on this and uh, go to work on these engine bells and start detailing them out. I'll also start detailing out these pieces because, you know, you got, you got to start somewhere, right? And I got to pick my battles. Um, and while I'm waiting for all of the um, milliput to dry around the, uh, the, the, the front of the, the shuttle, the nose cone and, and uh, those, um, uh, those uh, reaction thrusters uh, that, that allow it to sort of stabilize and move and change direction in space. Uh, anyway, all of that is drying. So why that's drying, I'm going to be working on this. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like um, after we've, uh, we've uh, got all that together, okay? Stick around. Work progresses on my 172 scale shuttle. And a uh, couple of things to report back to you uh, before we sort of <clears throat> continue on with this segment. 
uh, again, if you're just sort of scrolling through and you've discovered me at this point, uh, we are going to be building the Discovery Space Shuttle as it looks today at the Smithsonian in uh, DC. Um, landing gears are down, it's parked in the hangar, you can walk under it, you can see all of its burns, blisters, and uh, incredible amount of stress that this um, remarkable machine went through. So that's what we're attempting to do here. Um, now, um, I've put a, an overall sort of uh, gray primer coat over it um, j just to see where I might have some issues. Um, now, I have some fit issues with this thing. I tried my darndest to get it to all line up. Um, it's, it's an old pop, so um, it, it, it's not perfect. Um, and um, I've, I had a, 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 I'm having, a, I should say, a bit of a difficult time uh, with it. But uh, nonetheless, we put it, we've got it together. And um, I think we're going to be fine. Uh, we're putting aftermarket decals on this. So wherever you're putting black decals, it needs to be white. And wherever you're putting white decals, it needs to be either black or gray so that they pop. Um, confusing to my head as well but <laughs> you know it's the simplest things that drive me crazy um on the leading edges of my wings i've got some pretty decent um i i, I had a uh i got lucky uh so seams are looking quite good a little bit of cleanup to do um and you can see here i've got a little bit of cleanup to do so we'll put we'll get some putty in there um as i'm looking at the front uh, this is where we put in the um, uh, the thruster unit. Uh, this is the aftermarket thruster unit. Um, that went in quite well. You can see I've got a bit of a burn bulge here from plastic, but I'm not worried about that because my um, my heat blankets are going to uh, be covering that. And so I wanted a little bit of a lip here deliberately so that my tape uh, can actually go flush to that. So I'm not worried about it. Um, that's all going to go on quite well. Um, I did have to do a little bit of reconstruction to the nose uh, with some milliput, uh, simply because I made an error here um, and I had a bit of uh, a gap, but that's all gone now, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I've got a little bit of masking tape on my windows. Uh, I did put a basic cockpit in there, uh, but really all I care about seeing, believe it or not, is the dashboard itself, because in all the photos, uh, reference photos that I've taken of Discovery, um, you can just about make out the dashboard. So when you, when you stand on the um, sort of a, a, a balcony and you can look over at, at, at the shuttle, it's incredibly impressive. Um, a little bit of cleanup to do on, on top here. Uh, all of my blankets are going to go down the side here, so um, I just have to make sure all my blankets... Now, curiously enough, uh, these vent holes, um, they should be uh, filled in. They shouldn't be recesses like this, uh, because they do open and close. Uh, this would appear to look like they're in the uh, open position, so we can definitely do something about that. Um, as you know, I've left the wing unglued because I've got to be able to get my rear um, uh, tail fin um, in there. Um, this is the piece that can splay open uh, on landing to actually act as a windbreak. But sadly, this kit doesn't allow you the opportunity to do that. Um, I, could, uh, I could go for a scratch build on that. Uh, but um, to be brutally honest with you, uh, I just I just don't want to. <laughs> I've got so much else to do with this kit. Um, but anyway, so I've got a I, I've got some smoothing out to do. But for the most part, um, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Um, anyway, it's good to get it together because it starts to give you a real fundamental understanding of um, you know where the lines need to be. Most of the entire surface of this kit will either have the um, the heat blankets or tiles, decal tiles, 100% uh, of it. So, um, uh, and I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm liking 
uh, I, I've not removed any of the uh, raised panel lines on this uh, on the model. Um, I've tried to preserve them where I could for two reasons. One, to give me an exact notation of where things need to go, where tile needs to go versus blanket. But also because, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you quickly. Let me uh, put this down and show you these because I'm working on these. Um, and I'm hoping you can catch this. I'm hoping you can catch this in the light. I'm not sure if you can. But, uh, oh, there, that's perfect. Do you see that? That's all from the raised panel lines underneath. So it really works. Um, so I am super, super happy with that. Um, now, uh, I haven't dulled these down yet, so they're still a little shiny, but we will get these dulled down a little bit. Um, but what I have done is on the inside, I have added a two mil plastic card. Um, I've added some of my... Um, duct tape, my, my metal tape, um, which is accurate to the model. And I've added uh, to, the, to the actual ship, excuse me, and I've added the framework uh, on the inside. What I've got now to do is, is I've got to add these decals that I've got, a decal sheet. I've got two other decal sheets that I want to show you uh, because uh, I did not show you those uh, earlier on in this segment, and I want to share them with you now. Um, there is, um, as I mentioned, there's not a tremendous amount of, of stuff out there, uh, but, uh, and I also have a subscriber who's kindly sending me some of his decal sheets. I'm anxious to see what they are. If they get here before I get to the next segment, I'm certainly going to take a look. If I don't, I don't think this will be the the last sh shuttle I build. I've had a couple of friends ask me if I would build one for them. It won't sadly be this year, but uh, perhaps I'll do it next year for them. Um, very hard for me to find time to actually do commission builds. I've done a couple um, and I'm not opposed to it under the right circumstances, but uh, it's a challenge for me just in terms of time. Uh, so these are from Warbird. This is a company um, that is putting out a pretty decent, um, a, a, a pretty decent product. Um, and these are a lot better than the decals that come with the sheet, especially the umbilical plate, uh, the umbilical couplings. Um, I'm really happy with those um, because what I can do is, is I can get these onto a, um, a piece of card if I wanted to. Um, and, I, and I can actually... Um, a very thin card, uh, and, and, and I can actually get some holes in here and, and do a little bit of paint work to these to because uh, there's there should be some copper in here, uh, a little bit of red in some of these, um, and some of these holes need to feel as if they're defined. So I might go ahead, put this on some thin card, uh, attach it to the model, then go ahead and drill into the actual kit itself and add some pipage. Uh, perhaps either some small plastic piping or some of my copper pieces just to give give that a more accurate feel. But the reason why I wanted to show you this uh, decal sheet is because it comes with these uh, these pieces here, which go on the doors uh, of the landing bay gear doors that I just showed you around the side. So I'm going to be doing that uh, this morning. Um, so that's that's really good, and there's some other there's some other pieces on here that are that are clean too, and, and they're they're not they're not in one sheet. They they are individually cut uh, on the sheet, which is extraordinary. Um, so um, I highly recommend this sheet. This is War Warbird. Uh, so just to let you know, um, but the pièce de la résistance that I wanted to share with you actually was. Um, these the, these uh, decal sheets. Now uh, these are also from Warbird, and what they are. <laughs> now, if you are uh, if you are a um, if you are a rivet counter, you're going to be in heaven uh, because um, essentially what this is is it's the individual identification 
numbers for the tiles on the ship. And I'm going to try and get some of them on because I think it's going to really make a difference. Now, on the actual shuttle itself, not every single tile is actually numbered. If you look um, closely at some of the details, and, I, and I'll share some of those with you in a minute, um, it's not 100% of the tiles. It's leading edges. Um, it's places where I, I think they perhaps had a significant risk of, of, of damage or losing them. Um, so I think it was a very fast way to identify it um, so that perhaps even in space, if it had to be replaced, they could, um, they could identify the number uh, because they would do a flip over. And, and so you could actually look at, you know, they, uh, NASA could actually look at, Houston could actually look at the, the belly of it to see if there were any lost tiles. And so it makes it sort of easier if they are storing them on the ship and were able to replace them or needed to replace them in space for an emergency. That's how you would do it. But uh, more importantly, what this also has um, extraordinarily are my caution. Uh, these are, uh, uh, are caution uh, little decals. They're caution decals. And, and where they go is they go on the engine bells. Now, I've been working on my engine bells. Here, here's one. Um, and I think you'll see, um, boy, that is awfully dark. Um, let me take this away here. That's better. Um, I'm not sure why that is so dark. Let me get some more light on it. How's that? That's better. I've been putting a little bit of gum metal on my engine bells, uh, so they're coming. They're coming along quite well. Um, and um, in doing in doing so, um, now I'm ready to put my caution decals on these. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of scorching on the inside of here, but not too much. Um, and this should be good to go. So I'm really happy, really happy with the results on uh, on the engine bells. So that's, uh, th that's really good. And so uh, work continues. Um, so I, I'm continuing to sort of play with things, deal with things. I've got a lot of sanding and patching to do just to get some smooth surfaces where I want. The, the only other thing I wanted to share with you is um, I am using A-R-E-Z-A Fabripore. I got this on Amazon. This is a perfect waffle tape, and it clings to plastic like nobody's business. It cuts beautifully, and it does not, um, it, it, it doesn't fray. It doesn't fray at all. Um, and so when you cut into it, uh, you get these beautiful waffle shapes. So I'm just super, super happy with that. And of course, because it's got these waffle holes in it, when it lays down on plastic here, and I'll show you on this white piece that's not even, when it lays down, look what it does. It's perfect. And um, it's really easy to deal with. So I, I, I couldn't be happier with it. So if you're going with the thermal blankets, this is, this is a great product for it. Um, I, I, I really highly recommend it. So um, I'm going to continue to lay some of my decals down. Um, I am, I'm, I'm sort of picking and choosing the parts that I'm working on uh, just because there's an awful lot of details. But primarily, what I wanted this build up to really be about is all the finish techniques, um, some of the weathering techniques, and, and, and just what you can do with a basic shell um, for, you know, that, that's what we're trying to do here. Get something, get a finished model that accurately, to the best of my ability, represents the parked Discovery shuttle. So, uh, we're, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited with it. Um, so, uh, we'll get a little more, pro a little more progress in this update, um, and, and, and show you where we're going and perhaps even, uh, start to look at some of the decals uh, laying down uh, on, on, on this thing. Oh, a quick update on the windows. Uh, my windows look pretty good. Uh, there is an inconsistency with the actual, um, where the windows were placed into the shuttle, there's a ledge. We don't have that ledge. 
Uh, now, we could certainly try to mimic that ledge with some milliput and some card, but as I look at it, um, I don't think we need to because I think there's enough there for us to see uh, that it looks as close as I can get. But uh, for sure, uh, the decal windows, the, wi the window decals, I should say, um, are going to just, they're going to be spectacular. It's really going to pull you into this machine and really show you show off its detail. So I'm super excited about that. So um, let's uh, let's advance the ball just a little more for this uh, for this update because uh, lots of stuff is happening. Okay. So one of the things I have to keep reminding myself is that essentially what I'm doing is icing a <laughs> icing a cake. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but that's what's going on in my head. Um, I'm building the, the the sort of the carcass of, of a shuttle, uh, as we know from from the Revell 172 scale box. But it's a shell. What is going on the outside is going to make this model special for me. So. Um, <clears throat> That's what I have to keep reminding myself is because sometimes I, I, I'm stop, I stop and I have to sort of think about how this is all going together. Um, but remarkably, um, I think I found uh, a solution to some problems that I'm, I'm very excited about. So uh, let me start by showing you this. Um, it's, for the most part, uh, the model is complete. Now what I have done is, um, I have added some 010 strip uh, along the top and as you can see along the sides. And what I'm really happy about is the way that it has created a, a, a sort of seamless connection for the cargo bay doors which are closed. The kit had some problems in terms of fit. Um, so. Uh, demonstrated perfectly here in the uh, in the tail section where everything is lined up correctly but we've got this this huge step on one side of the tail fin so I'm gonna have to be uh, doing a little bit of create creative uh, sort of seamage and uh, maybe a little putty I, I don't know but that leading edge gets black uh, tiles so it's 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 got to be as, as clean as, as it possibly can. Um, we've got areas of this uh, ship that had thermal blankets, areas that have tiles, and some where tiles and blankets collide. It's, it, was, it was really interesting. And um, in sort of looking over all of the various different uh, books and, and information about it, um, a lot of that ha had to do with where they thought this ship was the most vulnerable and uh, where, where it needed tiles versus blankets. Uh, but some collide with each other, uh, collect with each other. Um, as, as you can see on, uh, on this shot, um, you can see on, the, uh, on, on this particular shot, we are, we are looking at uh, essentially, on, now I want you to sort of pay attention to the right the right side the very right side of this where you can see thermal blanket uh, colliding with white tiles and then some black tiles um, now I'm assuming um, it's interesting the white tiles they're made of silica um, black tiles have some other composite uh, m material that that um, in included Teflon and it also um, I I included um, some some other materials as well and uh what what's really interesting is is how the design of the tiles connects with uh, a shape and a space what you're looking at on the bottom right there is the umbilical uh plate at the rear of the ship and uh and then you're looking at the very top of the of of the uh cargo bay there um and and a, a portion of the rear thruster section um, and uh, here's another great shot close up of those um, thermal blankets, um, as you can see with this, this sort of waffle shaped look to them. 
and uh, how how sort of dirty and, and, and crusty they are. And also, pay attention to the left third of this photo where you can see very long, thin strips next to uh, basic squares, uh, which appear to be f about 14 by 14, and how the edges of those squares have a material that is most likely there to prevent the patch from actually fraying. And have a look also at, uh, in, the, in the sort of center of uh, this photo, just below the Endeavor sign, Look at the, the lines on, on some of the material and, um, and others. It's almost like it's, it's, it's not manufactured differently, but it's, it's of a, perhaps of a different batch or what have you. The point I'm making is, is that there is a tremendous amount of um, uh, uh, bric-a-brac. Bric it's hard to explain what I'm trying to explain, which is when you're looking at it uh, in person, it all comes together and, and makes this sort of amalgamated shape, but when you take a hard look at it, it's very uh, confusing. It's, it's not a pristine surface at all. It's, it's definitely a, a handmade, uh, not machine-made surface. And uh, you can see how they've tried to create the mosaic and, and, and make it as uh, ergonomic as possible but it, it has that funkiness to it. And so that's what I'm trying to go for. So anyway, um, this has now had uh, what I consider to be its final coat of primer on the top. I'm not too worried about some of the scuffing uh, because um, it, every surface of this ship is gonna be covered either by decals or by thermal blankets. So it's gonna look quite interesting and impressive, I think, when it's finished. So I'm gonna get it out of the way um, and I want to dive right into uh, the thermal blanket situation. Now, this is the rear tailpiece that has to be installed uh, before um, I am able to uh, close up my, my rear wing, um, just simply because of the way this ship was designed. And I don't want to break off these pins because um, I do need this gap. But I wanted to show you what I've done. I've uh, put on the thermal blanket here. And um, I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, lot of much when you're super close up. Uh, no, I've not finished uh, this. It still is, you know, in the painting process. Um, but um, I wanted to start talking about uh, how, how I'm uh, proceeding with this. But I, I, let me, I'm going to get a little paint on a brush here and show you uh, how this cleans up because it does clean up quite quite well and it adds that that look that um, is very reminiscent of the actual uh, the actual machine itself and I think you'll agree with me that you can see how that is starting to really uh, all come together and and look like one piece um, and that's that's pretty good and it's pretty darn close I have to say um, now it's had several shades of, of white on it um, and there's a reason for that it's also had a little PVA glue on it as well uh, to, to just really sort of amalgamate the surface um, but this is trial and error in terms of how it all comes together but um, I'm really happy with, with that look. Um, now, under the harsh cameras and lights and lenses, um, it might not look like a whole lot. But it, to, the, to the eye, which is how this model is really meant to be seen, um, it's coming together quite well. And so, so what I want to do is, uh, in the interest of time, um, I want to sort of just do a little bit of my, my waffle making here. Um, so I'm going to flip this bad boy over and you can see I've just got my plain plastic. And what I'm doing is, is I'm laying out uh, a strip of this uh, medical tape and um, it, you, can, you can tear it so, and it tears quite cleanly. And what I'm, what I'm doing is, is with a ruler, 
See, I don't know why I put it there. How are you supposed to see that? With a ruler, I'm just making these, these sort of shapes. Um, and the purpose of that is so that I can actually start planning where these, sh where these shapes are going. Um, and I want to show you how that looks because it works quite well. So what I've been doing is I've been taking some of the tape, lining it up with the edge here because that's where it's got to go and down it goes. And I give it a good press and you can see that it starts to, um, it starts to amalgamate uh, here. Um, so I'm going to cut another strip for you and lay that down. And what I'm trying to do is buttress it up just a little bit um, and, and give it a little bit of an overlap. Now the purpose of that is to sell this idea of um, this, as you can see, th this this paneling and how it, it, it's all sort of connected. Um, and it works really quite well. And so you can start to see as I'm laying these down and you can see these lines I'm creating. And um, now it's all going to get several coats of paint um, and it's all going to uh, be sort of uh, blended together with um, with various different uh, various different uh, shades, and I'll show you some of the whites that I'm using in just a second here. Um, and again, you come in um, and you find a, a place, and you just lay it down. And I'm what I'm do trying to do here is just mimic some of this um, some of this pattern patination that I'm seeing on uh, the research photos that I've got. And um, that's what I'm following. Now, what I love about this, this tape um, is quite forgiving. And I um, can lay that just there. And, uh, and I can... Now, if you've got a little bit of overlap, I'm not too worried about it because this trims quite beautifully. Obviously, you've got to have a sharp knife, but it trims very well. Um, I've got a lot of cleanup to do, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to keep going here, and I'm going to just keep waffling this. And then after I've waffled it, I'll tell you what, I, what happens next. Uh, let me just lay down one more piece here and get that all connected. And um, I'll fill in the blank there because I think it's worth you seeing that. Um, and again, I'm just doing this to the eye. And I'm just trying to, you know, sort of take patches that um, I think fill in, the, fill in the blanks. So this one lies directly over that one. And we just give it a good, good squeeze. And then when the whole thing is covered, I'm going to get a little bit of watered down PVA glue and I'm going to paint this whole thing. Let that dry and then I'm going to start adding some color. And that's how you get to this. Um, now, this uh, is looking a little scrubby and dirty at the moment because I haven't had a chance to work on it. I've only had a chance to work on this top piece. But I'll continue painting this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's, when it's all finished, okay? So, uh, and that, that'll, I think that will ultimately conclude um, this part, but I want to show you the finished, finished piece, so uh, stick around. One of the things that the tape does is it creates this, this sense of girth, this sense of weight. Uh, it, does no, it no longer looks like a toy, and that, that to me is, is uh, pretty spectacular. Um, so you can see this thing is starting to come together. I'm, I'm starting to put some aging and some staining on this. 
Um, I, I've, uh, you know, I'm not too worried about where it's, it's come up a little bit right here. I'm not too worried about it because um, I can put another PVA glue layer on here as well um, and, and just continue that process. And again, you know, creating panels for it um, and just continuing to play with its shapes and its, sh and its shadowing. But I think for the most part, that looks pretty good. Now it is going to get black tile all the way around the edge here. And I'm not entirely sure whether or not my decals are going to work or whether or not I'm going to have to go the old fashioned way and put some plastic card on there. I'm prepared to do either. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, it's just going to be um, sort of an experiment of trial and error. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, I'm sort of grateful to have a, a cadre of whites in my arsenal. So uh, on the bench now, take a look just at the different whites that I've got out here. I've got the 001 white. Uh, I've got the 270 white. Um, I've got pale sand. I've got off-white. And I've got aged white. And I'm playing with all of them. And ultimately, it's just really to get some shadows um, and some staining. But, you know, the more you blend these paints together and the more you play with it, the better the result you're going to get. So that's a little look into the thermal blanket preparation using surgical tape. Um, it is uh, a trial and error thing, and you've, you, you do have to be patient. Uh, but it will work and it and it looks very effective and I think the overall Vision of this is going to be quite impressive because like I said, it won't look like a toy anymore It's going to look like something that's a little more substantial. So I'm excited to continue uh, So that'll do it for part two update. I know there's a lot to get through here But I hope it's helpful in the next update. We'll be a lot further along um, and you'll really start to see uh, how we're progressing and maybe even put some of the uh, uh, we'll put some of the, the, the larger decals on, on this uh, perhaps even the the belly decals uh, so that you can see those going on should be a lot of fun um, don't know if we're going to get this finished in the next episode but I suspect we will uh, so anyway as always if you like the material guys please like and subscribe it means an awful lot to me I really appreciate it thank you for coming on this journey with me as always I hope it's as much fun for you as it is for me and as always I wish all of you please be well be safe build something and I'll see you on the next update take care everybody